Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, awesome. You're on. So I'm Mitchell. Um, I started the Perth Western Australia group. I was actually from New Zealand originally, lived in Hamilton and Auckland, but moved here. I've lived here for now 10 years. Um, so I just wanted to share what we've been doing. So we first went out in January and we actually printed letters and then we had a space down here where people could sign their address and their name and then that's the address we look up their federal politician and we send that we go to the office and deliver the letter. So we did that about 10 times, three or four hours, we just set up the table, put our letters on the table, pens to sign the letters and then just those 10 times, about three or four hours, we had 480 letters signed from people and we delivered them to basically every um, federal politician in our state. Um, and also we've had letters to the council. So we um, successfully got Fremantle Council, which was a city in Perth, it's on the coast, um, and they've supported Julian Assange. We've also sent 100 letters to um, the foreign minister, Maurice Payne. So I think if you guys I think that's a good idea. I'd totally. definitely recommend it. <laughs> totally. <Heaps of> support. <laughs> yes, and yeah. and we need this skill, like the the thinking around these. And I think low tech is an answer. Definitely, paper signing, paper pellets as well, but um, faxes faxes even so the digital if we can get the tech people to do to 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 cordon the sort of digital market and the scheduling of it then maybe this low-tech approach is mm -hmm. fantastic yeah um yeah i just you get a lot of people come up and they say i never usually sign a petition like this or i never usually get involved in something like this but this is just wrong and and then you can also um we also have another piece of paper where people sign a petition and we ask them to put their email, put their phone number, and then we say, can we contact you? And they tick that box. And if they tick that box, then you can um, add them to your group or contact them about events, stuff like that. So that was actually a tip that we got from the Amnesty International president of um, WA. And I've also been talking to them. So... Are they supportive? I mean, I know, sorry, I know that everyone knows that Amnesty... Australia or Amnesty in general put out a, a petition three working days before the extradition trial, which in my book, I should probably not say this live, but in my book, because I've been actively campaigning against them, that that was an insult. And if, if you ask me, that was about getting fundraising. That was about capitalising on the peak time of anger and its interest and then making money out of it. So I've been at Amnesty for years. So I'd be very interested to hear if you've got a different story to tell about Amnesty, <laughs> please. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. Um, so I think it was late last year I called the um, Amnesty president of WA, which is the state where Perth is, um, and she agreed to have a meeting and we basically – I went with another person that I met on Facebook through my group and we just talked to her about the whole situation. And she basically understood. She said she was very supportive. She said she'd be willing to come and bed with us. Um, I was talking to the union that you probably have and the group. We just talked to the organisers of that and they were also agreed to have a petition and the letters out at their tables. Actually, the Please support this action. Patrick is saying, please support this act action. So that's um, okay. That's definitely right. Patrick is, is off mute and off video at the moment. Ah, oh, there you are. Um, I lost Perth and I thought maybe you could come back on for me, Patrick, and talk to us because you obviously like that idea that you just heard from Perth. And I want to, I want to go back to him because that, I mean, I know people have been saying this before, but the actual idea of physically getting their signature is brilliant. And I don't know why we haven't done that here. I was not paying attention to Perth. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I just was jumping on because we lost um, we lost Perth. And Perth were just talking about how they were printing out quality letters that 
basically most people can't disagree with um, and getting people to physically sign paper copies and having a whole bunch of them and they've managed to send off about 400 letters to MPs by physically getting addresses so hopefully we'll get him back soon I don't know what happened but he seemed to cut out he must have left the meeting accidentally so I just thought I jumped to you because you were there no problem so uh, we started this, this campaign here with this uh, pictures with the statement for this assault uh, behind bars do you have to take part alex yeah I have a picture for you. can you talk more so, into the microphone um just so that we get uh, uh, as clear as possible okay can you hear me good is this okay i can't oh, okay yeah so um, we started this uh, uh, campaign, I think, two weeks ago, and now we have uh, 60, 60 people uh, sending us pictures. Um, I, I think this is a quite good result for starting this for the first two weeks. So everybody clicking on this link, then looking at this little uh, video, um, I, I would uh, appreciate it if you can um, support this action. Yeah. Great. So um, we are definitely going to support that campaign, and I think we should all learn something potentially from um, from um, Perth there because it's just so low tech and so simple. It's just the sort of thing we need to get onto. Um, I wanted to ask Perth whether they had been fundraising their own money to to print out all this stuff, and whether they found any good ways of dealing with that. Um, but I'm not sure if they're hearing me. Sounds like sounds yep. gone. Yeah. Yeah, you can hear me. Yep, I can hear you. Ah, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um. So with the funding, no, I haven't actually got any funding, but a few nice people just. If I just mention that it costs money to print and uh, send the letters, sometimes if, if the parliamentarians are far away, I have to send a letter. It costs a dollar for the stamp, but they just give me like a five dollar note or a ten dollar note. And yeah, I've, I've had another guy on Facebook even send me fifty dollars. I've just kind of mentioned it to people, but haven't really started my own fundraising because I don't want to kind of take away from the the main donations to WikiLeaks and stuff like that. Mm. And it's it's actually very cheap. So if you go to Office Works, a black and white page is eight cents. So print 100 for eight dollars um a thousand envelopes i bought for 13 dollars and i wrap them all individually in the envelope so that whoever's opening them has to open them all they don't just get a pile of the same pieces of paper and then can kind of like count them as uh, one yeah yeah right so they have to open each letter and uh yeah they have replied but usually the replies are just the, the Australian government is saying we cannot intervene, um, which is obviously not true because they have in the past for other journalists. Um, there's a case of Peter Gresty yep. and also James Rickardson was a filmmaker and there's clear evidence that our government did interfere. Um, even the foreign minister used the word intervene for intervention for one of those um, journalists previously and now they're saying they're Julian Assange, so I don't know. It's just... Well, I think that's an amazing um, endeavour that you've organised there and I don't know, even know why that sort of thing. I mean, I think MEB told me first about getting clipboards. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but we've got... Um, uh, where is it there? Whoops. Yeah. I keep on going the wrong place. Um, we've got this candles uh, sign up sheet now. And we only just started doing that recently. Um, I think Patrick, one of the reasons Patrick's done so well is because he was just going out there every week at the same time, the same place, just made it a weekly date. And that just brought a whole lot of people on that, that consistency really worked there. Um, so these kind of ideas, they're so low tech and simple. And I think we need to activate them in a really professional way. And I think mm. we have the skills. We've got the Joe, you know, we've got the Joe Booths who are technical and, you know, we've got people that are a bit of jack of all trades. I'm a bit like that. Um, mm. There's so many people that we can, 
get on board. The, the problem is that whenever you try to do anything like Unity 4J does, or I don't know about the Action for Assange people, how they've found it, and they've certainly had a lot of trolls and agents on their streams and problems with their streams, but I just, I, you know, I wonder how, you know, other people are coping with it and whether it's going the same way for them. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, um, I just want to say about um, maybe you feel like a bit hesitant to go out onto the streets. Um, I definitely was. Um, I just started it by making a Facebook event and only three people came and uh, that was in November. And after that, I was pretty disheartened, like didn't do things for another probably two months. But when I did... Um, more people came and it was about six people the second time, just through Facebook and Twitter. Um, and eventually it just built up just pretty quickly and we had a rally and 40 people came. And that was just from Facebook and Twitter. And Was that yeah, candles just, in July? Because I saw a massive group of people in Perth and I put you guys in my video because it was such beautiful footage with the policemen coming down the mall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had um, to have that in there. <laughs> it was great. And also just with the – we're taking a table out and getting people to sign letters. And so at first we had one table and now we've got three tables. So we can actually do – and we've got like probably 12 people that have been involved with that. So you just need two people to stand behind a table, just someone there to talk to. And people just will come up to your table if you have a banner and they'll just sign the letters. And it's just keep it's just kept growing and growing, and I've just met all these people, and you just talk to people, and then they say they might come next week, and they might have a table or a banner that they bring. Uh, a lady called Nick um, just donated her banner to me. I'd never met her. She just came up to me and said, "You're the guy for Facebook. Yeah, have this banner." And so yeah, I I'm like have not you too have confident. you have you been able to um, convert that effort and energy and those people that are available have you managed to find any way of kind of activating it in the last couple of weeks to do anything get some online stuff happening or um just planning online. for the future yeah i'm i'm not too sure about the online stuff i'm really hoping that this lockdown will be over especially in wa because it's um isolated from the rest of australia and new zealand as well like i think you guys pretty much got it under control for now. So I'm hoping that soon, like, you'll be open up. And I think we should just plan for a big event as soon as this is opened up because this trial is still going ahead. Um, yeah, so just plan the event now. Co contact everyone online. I mean, everyone's at home, so they're available to talk to, which is good. Yeah, you can true. You can ring musicians, all the musicians that you might want to play at your events and stuff. They're, they're all looking for stuff to do. Right. So, so as soon as this is over, we need to get out there, and I'm, I'm going to talk to Amnesty and ask them to actually hold a rally because I think they are um, in support of us here in WA. Well, is this a, a local chapter of the Amnesty? Did you say? Yeah, Am Amnesty West Australia. Right. Yeah, because I think the ones that I focused on were probably in the international ones. And what happened when I focused on Amnesty? Um, two things happened. Once was when I was outreach. Susie asked me to do some outreach and I wasn't really sure about what I was doing and I was a bit like a bull in a china shop. But one of the first things that other supporters were trying to encourage me to do was contact Amnesty. And that's why I kind of got so involved actually um, in pissing them off. <laughs> but what happened was that I, I wrote an email to Amnesty Australia and their media person called back and uh, emailed straight back with this amazing bullet point list of their support for Julian. And there were a few disclaimers in there, but it was essentially a supportive statement, which considering that their website was um, showing a smear about Sweden from 2012 up until three days before our trial in May, in in February, sorry, um, it was it was just amazing, um, and so we got this response from this media person. It turned out to be a single person and their feelings on it, and they were, were knowledgeable, and so they instantly gave their feeling back, or some some kind of unofficial message came out of Amnesty, and luckily we got it published 
really quickly and um, WikiLeaks posted it to their timeline just before they managed to retract it and say, oh, this was just one person acting in an office giving her opinion and it's not what Amnesty think. And so that was an interesting thing, but it certainly ruffled their feathers and uh, they didn't act then. And the reason we were on to them then was because Chelsea Manning was being banned and um, Amnesty Australia was doing quite a lot for Chelsea and so from New Zealand that was hosting her live streams because she couldn't go to Australia, um, we started putting on the attack on Amnesty and so that was an interesting response. And the other one was um, MEB and I were discussing a Shamnesty um, protest around about, to, you know, December, I think it was. And so we had literally just um, sorted out a, a, um, a, a logo that said Shamnesty and she was going to do London and I was going to try and get people to do offices or at least ring them everywhere. And before that protest even came about, they put out their positive statement and everyone was asked to shut up and put those memes away um, from what's going. Ah, hello, Paddy. Are you on? Hello. Maybe you should um, go full screen. I can't hear you. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm, I'm actually muting through my desk, so uh, I'll, I'll just change my life. I couldn't resist the picture-in-picture picture opportunity there, sorry. <laughs> it's an infinite fractal of supporters. See, there's so many of us. <laughs> um, okay, sorry, where, I, where was I? Where was I? I'm back here sorry, I distracted to, to you, me. Mitchell. There you go. Sorry oh. about that. It's a bit choppy. Yeah, we were, I guess, pretty annoyed at Amnesty as well, um, just the lack of kind of action. But I think you've just got to put that behind you. Like now that they're on board, he's on the website. He was, he was on the front page of the Australian website for a few weeks. Um, yeah, I think you can really go to the – they have these groups called local action groups who are basically groups of activists, I guess, and if you – look up your local action group you can go to those meetings and actually just ask them to act on this just make it about human rights make it about health um freedom of speech don't need to go into other stuff that they might not be interested in but they will support you i think mm. okay well i would like to think that's true and it's not just about money and how many um people they could get three days before the extradition trial with the minimum amount of actual effect it, that's what it certainly seemed like to me um but i i will give them um maybe maybe the international um secretariat has who is the person that makes the decision so effectively that's the ceo whoever's the top of amnesty decides what their campaigns are and that's that that was their complaint that they they would like to act but they can't because the international secretariat effectively is telling them what they can and cannot and for whatever reason three days before the trial that lifted that was lifted and i'd be very curious as to why that was lifted and when and then they probably had a heads up on your action and pending on chemistry oh, i'd love to think that. that was the best uh, route <laughs> yeah, yeah but I I don't think we were going to be a huge protest, uh, but I think we were having quite a draw online because it was going out with the candles and Emmy stuff and Julian Assange Defence Committee in London. So a lot of people were seeing it potentially. They told me that they looked at my previous Facebook and Twitter posts <laughs> before they wanted to talk and meet with me. So if you posted anything bad about them, they might not want to talk to you. <laughs> I think that I'd be already banned. I have a feeling I actually don't think they like me very much, personally. Um, I have the board member of Amnesty in New Zealand's number, and I was ringing her up in Myanmar and stuff, and I think she's had enough. Um, and I was polite, but I can be a bit bull in a china shop. I'm not the politest person because it, it just, you know, you do feel like you're smacking my head against the wall sometimes and you can't help but lash out and I'm I wish I could be Tulsi Gabbard and just even though the topic that you're talking about is is atrocious and disgusting and not that I'm approving of what she's done now but actually you know the way that she is able to calmly statesman like yeah, quality absolutely yeah. and I wish I could channel that but I am not that person so I am better used in the sarcastic bitch slap <laughs> to Full in a china shop option. Um, not so good for being diplomatic, possibly. 
Um, have you heard the, have you seen the video where Donald Trump says about WikiLeaks that he thinks there should be the death penalty? Yeah, I have seen that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also yeah, I've seen the video where he said, we love Wiki WikiLeaks. And I've seen Cassandra F Rule's video, which is actually the most telling. And I would 100% recommend people. I actually made my first documentary video on my Alex Hills channel. And if you go down about five or so videos, Cassandra Fairbanks is probably the biggest video that I've managed to do yet. And um, it, just listen to that call if you want a little glimpse of what's going on in the Trump administration, because I think Trump supporters do support Julian and they're in cognitive dissonance mode at the moment. They're going, oh, yes, Q, trust the plan. He's going to be pardoned. Oh, we just need to get him out of the evil British justice system. And once he's extradited, he'll be fine. But do you get the feeling he's going to be fine in America? Because <laughs> from that call, Cassandra Fairbanks, it just totally blows it out of the water. And I don't even understand how Q can carry on with the bullshit at this point, really, actually. Um, and, and I mean, you're, this is speaking from someone for the first week of Q, and I was onto it in October of, what was it, 2018 even? I was onto it then, and I I was sucked in. I thought, God, if this is real, this is fantastic. Wouldn't it be great if Trump really was cleaning up the deep state? Wouldn't that be lovely? Wouldn't it? <laughs> um, but it, it was quite clear very, very quickly that that was not the case. Um, and I immediately just went, no. Um, and obviously, you know, you start to see other journalists calling it out. I, I sort of thought, yeah, no, this is stupid. This is obviously not real. And now I've come to the conclusion that it is just the antidote to the complete bias in the MSM against Trump. This is what you get when you do what you did in the MSN media. Um, because to be fair, and I don't like Trump, but he was actually um, spied upon. It, it, he was wiretapped. The Russiagate thing was a complete farce. We all know that. Everyone with the brain actually should know that. Um, I think probably. Maybe I'm being as, you know, assuming again. Well, the reason I brought up the death penalty thing is because the Australian government and the New Zealand government as well are both um, wholly against the death penalty. And they actually said that in Parliament because they were asked, what are you doing? Like Julian says he's afraid to go to uh, America because he'll get the death penalty. So what are you doing to oppose that? And she said, uh, our foreign minister said, we've had assurances that he won't get the death penalty. But then there's this video on YouTube. Um, I can post the link in the chat, and it's Trump saying, "I think he should get the death penalty." So what I've done now in my newest letters, I've screenshotted the video, I've posted the link to the video, and I've said, I've quoted him saying that he should get the death penalty. And that's what I think we really need to ask the politicians: if you call them or speak to them in person or in your letters, you've got to ask them. The President of the United States said he should get the death penalty and our government's opposed, so how can you not oppose this extradition? I think um, part of that Cassandra rules thing was that the, a deal was made with Ecuador that, that the death penalty wouldn't apply and I completely agree with you, it's quite clear. But I mean it's also quite clear that Trump will say anything to appease anyone at any time and it can be different within one second to the next, you know, so it's difficult to know. Um, how you can do, but but your idea there of like combining um, maybe a snippet of that and then combine it with a video of the UK going, oh yes, you know, we've totally ruled that we don't believe in the death penalty. And then, you know, combine it with a snippet of someone reading out factual details about the court case and what the barist, um, the judges said, you know, maybe maybe that kind of tying together a few really key clips in a two minute twitter size video that really put the cognitive dissonance to rest you know by things like you're suggesting cool. okay i've got to go now but okay Mitchell, to well, we would love to hear more from you because every, you know every idea you've come up with so far has been totally gold um and um sort of making us think in a much more low-tech way and i do love that you think that the protests are going to come back on but I am actually very sceptical on how much our powers will come mm. back and I don't think yeah. the group meetings are it.
I don't think. We've even had discussion in New Zealand, and we've done very well here with the, the COVID, but we've had discussion about moving back to level three, whatever that means, which is one stage less than that. I think you can go and have a work meeting, but I don't think the protests will be allowed at that stage. Um, I think. That was really great. <laughs> Doesn't it make you feel good?